Hi folks, it's Ron with Ideal Industries. Hey, in this video, I want to talk about tracing of cables and walls or in a building. And uh, you know, our best of class sure trace circuit tracers here have actually just gotten a lot better. You know, I get asked quite often, how do you go about finding cables in a building? And uh, if you've never been exposed to circuit tracers and, and how they do and what they do, you're going to find out the answer to this is, A, it's not going to be cheap. Uh, circuit tracers can be a little on the expensive side. And how expensive they are really is relative to how bad you need to go find that cable in the walls. And B, you're going to find out it's not always easy to do. Tracing of cables is a little bit of an art form. And, you know, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And I'm going to ask you to take a look at the new catalog numbers 61-955. 61-957 and 61-959 uh, circuit tracers from Ideal Industries. You can go find them on our website and learn more about how you can actually get your hands on one. You know, there's roughly 600,000 contractors out there daily who are actually trying to find cables and walls, and circuit tracers have really evolved over the last handful of years, and I would encourage you to go take a look at what else is out there. And um, you're going to find having the right tool at the right time is going to be invaluable when you're out there tracing cables in a building. Now, you can use these circuit tracers on uh, live or dead circuits, open or closed, up to 600 volts AC or DC. Uh, the tracer is a Category 3 rated tracer, so it means that it's safe to use throughout the building and back into the electrical panels and things like that. And you can use the tracer to find wires that go back into a breaker in electrical panels or a fuse. Uh, you can use them to find uh, trace wires in walls, floors, and ceilings. Um, you can use them to find opens and shorts in cables. And while they're really not meant for outdoor use underground, you'll find that the circuit tracer works pretty good out in the lighting circuit, out into the parking lot. And if you are working on live circuits with these tracers, please be safe out there and make sure you're using and following good industry guidelines. Now, let's take a closer look at uh, the sure trace, circuit tracer, and let's move over to the shop, and I'll show you actually how to use it. The tracers consist of a transmitter and a receiver. The transmitter here produces a unique signal onto the circuit to be traced, and the receiver detects that unique signal when it's placed in proper orientation to the wires being traced or breakers being identified. Now, the receiver provides a numeric value as well as a variable pitch audible tone that increases as the signal becomes stronger. And the transmitter sends a 32 kilohertz fixed amplitude time modulated signal that injects a voltage onto the circuit to be traced, which then induces an electromagnetic field onto the circuit. And the tracer has over twice the battery power of, over, of any competitive unit and produces a very strong signal that the receiver here can detect. And the digital circuitry of the tracer allows it to work in even noisy electrical environments, and you will be able to trace cables into parts of the building you haven't been able to trace before. Now, whether the circuit is open or closed greatly affects the signal strength of that electromagnetic field. And in an open circuit, no current's flowing, so the field produced is much weaker. However, in a closed circuit, the injected voltage also induces a current flow which produces a much stronger electromagnetic field. And this is the optimal method for tracing as a much stronger signal allows the receiver here to detect a signal from a greater distance from any circuit being traced. In this example, if we plug the transmitter unit into the last receptacle in a circuit, it should provide a closed loop and a strong signal all the way back to the breaker panel. Here we have placed the transmitter unit into one of the receptacles in the middle of the circuit and it will provide a much stronger signal going back to the panel, which creates a closed circuit between the hot and neutral, but a much weaker signal going on to any receptacles downstream, which is actually an open circuit. And by plugging in a simple load, like a lamp, into that last receptacle in that circuit and turning it on, it will provide a, a closed circuit then, and a much stronger signal that can be traced actually in both directions. I can demonstrate that by turning on the transmitter unit here and setting the receiving unit just a little bit away. And I'm going to turn off the audible indication on the receiving unit. Now, when no test leads are plugged into the transmitter unit, we are receiving a signal, but it's kind of a weak one, and the circuit is completely open. Now, just by attaching one of the two test leads into the transmitter unit, the receiver does pick up a much stronger signal, but again, the circuit is open. And by attaching the second test lead into the transmitting unit, the signal will increase again, but again, the circuit is completely open. Now, if I close the circuit by simply clipping the outer gear clips together, we'll get the, actually the highest reading on the tester. The circuit tracer can be used to trace a variety of cables and comes with a variety of adapting cables to either plug the transmitter directly into electrical outlets or using alligator clips to clamp it right to the end of a conductor. You can even get an inductive clamp that can clamp around a cable and induce a signal into a cable when no exposed ends of the cable are available. While primarily used in tracing electrical cables, you will find it will work on helping you sort out coaxial and UTP cabling as well. Since magnetic fields in any hot and neutral conductor tend to cancel each other, weakening the signal, a second method for tracing is to use a remote return path, where one lead of the transmitter is plugged directly into the hot wire we are tracing, 
and the other can be connected to a neutral or ground connection in another circuit in the building using the 25-foot cable. Since the two conductors are not in the same path, it should increase the signal in the conductor we are tracing. The receiving unit has a nice bright organic LED display and indicates that the transmitting unit indicates that there is power present through the lightning bolt symbol on the receiver being lit. Now the numeric value, the bar graph display, and the audible signal, which can be turned on and off, provide quick and easy to understand tracing feedback. Now the battery symbol on the top of the display will let you know when your battery is running low. The numeric display indicates the signal strength that the receiving unit is receiving. Now one great thing about the receiving unit is the reading will rotate or move depending on how you hold the tester. And it's always upright, which is really convenient when tracing wires. Now there's two antennas in the top of the unit here, and there's one in the very back here for tracing wires like in walls, and the one in the very front is used for finding breakers in panels. Now the tester has four sensitivity modes with resolution from 0 to 99, and the four sensitivity modes really help in trying to trace cabling and get you fairly close to the cable you're looking for. Now generally, start at the highest sensitivity setting first to begin with and use the lower settings to verify you're on the correct cables. The intensity of the received signal depends on how the receiver is pointed in relationship to the source of the signal or wire. If the receiver is pointed away from the signal source, then there'll be a very low value indicated on the receiver. And if the receiver is rotated about its axis compared to the main antenna in the transmitting unit, the signal varies in strength as the antenna is pointed at and then away from the circuit being traced. I can demonstrate this by rotating the receiving unit in the earlier demonstration. And as you can see, as I rotate the receiving unit, the intensity of the signal does change and therefore rotate the receiver over the wire being traced until the strongest reading is displayed. And if during tracing the signal is reduced, the wire may have changed directions, so rotate the receiver to find a stronger signal again. I can use the receiving unit to locate other outlets nearby that are tied directly into the same circuit as they will give me a very high reading as well. And we can use the tracer to trace cabling in walls and ceilings looking for cables that give me the highest reading. We can trace that cable all the way back to the electrical breaker panel and properly identify that breaker by simply scanning the breakers with the receiving unit and looking for the one with the highest reading. Once identified, you can trip that breaker and the lightning bolt symbol will turn off on the receiving unit indicating that the transmitting unit no longer detects power on the circuit. This tells us with a quick look at the tracer that I tripped the right breaker. That's a quick look at the ideal line of SureTrace circuit tracers and I really just touched on the high points of what the tracers can actually do. I think if you find out if you're going to give this thing a try, you're going to find out it's going to save you a lot of time when you're out there trying to trace circuits in the future. And it seems like every time I hand one of these to a contractor and let them borrow it, uh, they want to buy it. And if that's the case, you can contact our ideal customer service line there. Or you can go check it out on our website to find out more about the tracer and find a local distributor nearby you you can actually buy one from. Hey, thanks for watching, folks. I'm Ron with Ideal, and I'll see you on the next one.